Hey guys, Ty here. I am back with another how to get the most out of your Oculus Go video. And today we are going to be going over a new app that is coming out. And I'm pretty excited about this app. It's called Virtual Desktop and it is sick. Okay, what it's gonna let you do is basically anything you can do on your computer, anything. You're now gonna be able to do it on your Oculus Go. It's pretty dope. So first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna to wanna to download uh, the kind of this companion app, the server app, and you're gonna to go to vrdesktop.net and we'll bring up a little screen and you're just gonna click on the little orange link at the bottom right here uh, and you're going to download it and you're gonna set it up. And we'll show you what that looks like on the PC here in a second, actually through the VR uh, desktop app. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over and I'm gonna show you how everything kind of is controlled and how it works, what's it, what it looks like. There's already a couple of videos, I believe, uh, that have uh, gaming and stuff like that. It does work great with gaming. So if you wanna play Fortnite on a huge 250 inch screen, it works really, really well. I am personally not a gamer and you don't wanna watch me try and play Fortnite. It's pretty, I mean, it's terrible. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into this. So let's get the app on right here and we'll go ahead and pop up a screen here okay so now we've got this all right so here we are we're gonna go in and we are gonna launch virtual desktop and uh, let's see maybe I can kind of face this so I'm pointing towards you guys okay so let's go back all right now this is the screen that you're gonna first see here uh, when you load it up right here um, when you set up the companion app right here this is what it's gonna look like except this is just going to be a blank text field you're gonna put your oculus username in there and then click connect and then bam that's all you need to do to pair the app on the go with the desktop program right there. And then you've got a couple options. Start with uh, Windows, mute the speakers. That's a good one so that you don't have dual audio. Um, there is very little latency, but it's just a little bit minor. Um, so the audio does sound, kind of sound weird if you have them coming through both speakers. And then lock computer on disconnect. You're not gonna need that, I don't think. That's if you take off your go and it goes into standby, um, your computer is locked up I wouldn't want to do that because I don't want to be able to control it both ways because you can control it through the virtual desktop right here and you can control it through your keyboard and mouse over here simultaneously. So sometimes that's nice to uh, be able to do. Um, okay, so in order to pull up the menu within virtual desktop, you're gonna click your back button on the Go remote. And this is what you've got right here. So when you first launch it, before you connect to uh, your computer, in fact, we can just disconnect, this is what it looks like right here. So you're gonna see your computer. And if you have this installed, uh, the, the streaming app on multiple computers, you're gonna have a list of computers right here. So you're just gonna go ahead and click on it. It measures your bandwidth and bam, you're connected. Now we'll open up the menu again. Remember, back button on the remote. And you gotta get kind of used to the back button opening up the uh, main menu here and not going back in your environment. So that took up me a minute to kind of get used to and here this is just charging, we'll unplug that. All right, cool. So um, here's a computer, not a whole lot to do right here. Here we're gonna go into environment. So right now I am in the void, black void. This is my favorite environment. Uh, and then we've got your gray void. You've got your purple nebula. This one's pretty cool. Um, if you look closely, I don't know if you can tell in the video here, I'll try to say still the stars are actually twinkling, so this is kind of cool. Um, you've got space sky, which is a kind of a combo between a cloudy sky and a space, kind of neat. Um, home cinema, this one is kind of cool, so you're just like in a smaller uh, home theater. I like that. We got some bottles of wine, a chillin', and a tablet there. Then you're gonna go into a home theater, so now we're talking you got a little bit more money to spend, and you're in this styly little home theater, uh, like the seats here. Uh, then we're gonna go into auditorium. This one is huge. So boom, we're now we're in this great big auditorium right here and you are smack dab in the middle. Big screen. Um, I wish that these steps that you're seeing here kind of went up higher so that we weren't having to look up at the screen. Uh, and then, uh, but we'll we'll get into how you can reorient uh, everything here in a second. And then this is one of my favorite environments as well. And this is your uh, home office space right here so we can kind of look around and I got a funny Oculus uh, Star Wars style poster with the Zuck on it right there and some old uh, newspaper covers right there uh, and then uh, let's go back to the black void uh, well actually 
we'll, we'll get back to that in a second. Let's do settings right here. So we're gonna go into your settings and kind of, I'll go over what everything does right here. And then after that, um, we're gonna go into how to actually control everything. So first, computers, auto connect. If you select auto connect, when you connect, it will just automatically connect you and bam, you're gonna see this. If you don't have that on, uh, it will bring you to this screen right here and you're gonna have to manually uh, connect right there. Um, optimal resolution, this matches the resolution. Uh, on your computer to what you're gonna have on your go, so your computer monitor will change. Uh, I noticed that it is at 1080p, because my computer's at 1080p and nothing changed when I connected, so just leave that there. Um, if you are running a uh, 4K computer monitor or different resolution there, it's gonna change that. Uh, and then uh, emulate gamepad on a PC, so this is it, the, it will pass through. You're gonna hook your gamepad up to your Go just like you normally do with Bluetooth to your Go. You don't have to connect it to your computer and it passes along all of those controls for playing games like Fortnite on the computer. Um, but it says, unable to play, or uh, enable to play games with your gamepad, disable to interact with the desktop. However, I found, let's back out of here, that uh, you can uh, interact with the desktop just fine uh, and you just trigger finger on something and I want you to on the top and move it around. But we'll get back into some of the controls in a second. Um, so I just leave this ticked all the time. It seems to work just fine. Uh, environment quality. Now, this environment right here actually is the only one I've noticed a huge difference when you go between high to low. Um, and we'll go over to low. And I don't know if you can tell, but now the text is a little bit fuzzier. It's just everything isn't as crisp. However, what you're looking at on the screen does not change uh, at all there. So yeah, low might save uh, some battery. Uh, power right there or battery usage. Uh, video frame rates. Um, down here we're going to see uh, we've got video frame rate at 60 frames per second and frame rates at 60 frames per second. There are two different frame rate adjustments right here. Video frame rates, um, this is between low and high bandwidth and this will take you low, brings you down to 30. Now you'll, you'll see we're down here at 30. If you're just watching videos like on YouTube unless they're 60 frame videos like 1080, 60 videos, low is gonna be fine. If you're opening up Plex or uh, any local or video on your computer, those are running at 24 frames a second so you're not gonna get any advantage at running it higher. Uh, and then right here, you can limit frame rate to 60 frames per second. If I pop this off, now you're gonna see this is gonna jump up to 72 frames because this app does run at 72 frames per second, but there's nothing moving in this app. So I just limit it to uh, 60 frames per second right there. No point in really overrunning it at 72 frames per second right here. Uh, and we'll bump this back up to high. Um, I see a little bit more CPU utilization when we're running it between low and high. All right, here you can see it drops down by about 10% or so. Uh, and then we'll go back up to high and we got up to 72. So anywhere between five to 10% uh, there. Dynamic lighting, uh, we'll go to another environment. What that is, is if the light that's coming from your screen is cast on the objects around you. So you see a huge explosion on the screen and you see orange light reflecting on the seats around you. Uh, and we'll do that in another environment because it is not applicable in this. Uh, and then um, allow custom orientation in all environments. So here I am in a desk or the office. If I wanna look up and press and hold, uh, the Oculus button there, it will change the orientation, but this is a little funky, so we'll go back. So um, you can go ahead and I just leave it, so maybe I wanna change uh, where I'm looking, lie in bed and be on a sideways a desk right there. Uh, there, and then boost clock rates. Now I need to do that right now, otherwise it does get just a tiny, tiny bit choppy because not only am I streaming from my PC to this, I'm actually streaming this back to the computer to uh, cast and record what I'm doing here. So boost the clock rates if you're casting your device to something else. Um, otherwise, um, yeah, so it says right here, increase battery usage, only use when recording video or casting. So you won't need that most of the time. Um, and you will notice uh, that uh, your CPU utilization down here will actually spike up uh, when you turn this off, but you are gonna be consuming less uh, battery overall right there. So I'm gonna boost the clock rates right here. And over here you can see uh, some info, uh, the video bit rate. So right now I'm connected to my PC at eight megabits per second, and then our CPU and GPU utilization over here and frame rates and yada yada. Now, one other thing that I'm super, super psyched about this, because this has so many cool environments, is videos. Now this is coming soon, as you can see right here. 
What this is going to allow you to do is in your companion app right here, this is clearly going to change because you are going to be able to assign folders on your computer to show up here and stream video directly and it will support 3D side-by-side -side and over under uh, 3D videos. So that is gonna be sick and it will also show you any video content that you have stored locally on the go right here. So this is gonna be my absolute go-to video player just for videos once they enable this um, and you can actually use 3D. Right now, there is no way to stream 3D anything in this yet, but it's coming. So if you've got a 3D VR app that you can run on uh, your PC, you should be able to see it in 3D when they do some updates in the future. Uh, so now let's go ahead and get out of that. Oh, one other thing I want to show you the environments and what, um, <clears throat> pardon me, what uh, the ambient lighting is like. So uh, in here, in fact, hold on, let's go back uh, to a better environment. Let's go to the home theater. That's a good one for this. Okay. So now we're in the home theater right here. And as we see, everything is just well lit. We're not getting any reflection or refracted light coming from the screen onto uh, our surroundings right here. Uh, if we go and we uh, just always enable it. Now, anything that's shining in here, we will see on like the seats. Right now, nothing is changing, so you're not seeing anything different. But if we had action, explosions, you know, undersea blue light, we're gonna see blue light reflecting, a big fire explosion, we're gonna see orange reflecting uh, right there. Um, so always enabled, just has it always enabled and it dims the light. So enabled when controller inactive. This way, if you set the controller down and you wait a few seconds, bam, then it, activates right there or if you prefer you can just disable it like yo uh, and I uh, generally keep it either always enabled or enabled when controller inactive so we'll leave it like that and that is everything on the user interface and how to set everything up it's super intuitive it's super easy um, and virtual uh, desktop right there streamers so we can actually close that out Okay, so here we are in uh, this environment and here's our desktop and I am going to go to uh, the black void because that is my favorite and um, you'll see these come up. Okay, I guess one last thing on your environment. So here are some adjustments you can make. Uh, headlock, this is gonna be perfect if you're traveling in a vehicle or in an airplane or Anytime that you're going to be moving a little bit and you want to keep the screen kind of in front of you So you'll see I move over here and it just kind of slowly drifts in front of me So this would be great in a car I'm moving up in an airplane uh, Wherever and you want to keep it in front of you. Okay, and then a reset view you click on that once and then wherever you move your head You click it you want to set it right there click the trigger finger boom There it is right there now distance this one. You're not going to really be able to see I don't think but it moves the screen virtually away or towards you by a little amount, but it keeps the screen size, the apparent screen size the same. And you do your adjustments like this moving left or right, and it's just a weird effect on your eyes. Like you don't really notice a huge difference. I just generally keep it far away all the way to the right. And then up here, you can adjust the curve. And so you can see the screen uh, kind of flapping along right there. So this is pretty cool. Uh, put it there and then size. And it gets big. You can go small to really big. So if we're big and we go up here to max curve, you've got a screen that wraps almost 180 degrees around you right there. So this is a little bit much for me, but it is pretty cool. So We'll bring the size down just a little tiny bit and when you go bigger the curve increases as well So I'm sure you can see that like that, uh, but right about there is a perfect uh, For uh, me uh, like that. So now we're gonna go back and I'm just gonna show you um, Kind of controls how you use it So if you want to move something just click it with the trigger hold it and move it. Okay, bam. It just works It's super easy. Uh, we'll go down and you just bring it all the way down. Let's go ahead and open up a uh, browser. Okay, so here we've got uh, Firefox. Just grab uh, the top there and you can move it around a like yo. If you double click it, it will make it big. Uh, double click it again and we go back to the original size. Close this out. Now, the keyboard. That brings me to that keyboard right there. What you're going to want to do to enable this keyboard is go down to the bottom uh, and just long press. Long press is the equivalent to a right click. 
and then you're gonna go up here to show touch keyboard button. Okay, so you're gonna select that and now you're gonna have the show touch keyboard. You wanna have the show touch keyboard button enabled because Windows is a little fickle and sometimes when you click on a form field, the keyboard doesn't pop up. It does usually, but sometimes it doesn't and you're gonna need to go down here uh, and just manually pop it up like that. Um, you can also connect a Bluetooth keyboard to your Go. That's gonna require kind of a different tutorial because you need to be able to access its actual Bluetooth settings, which is pretty easy to do through some side loading. I'll do another video on that, but you can connect a keyboard uh, Bluetooth directly to your Go and it will work great. I've tested it works fine on that. Um, so let's say that you want to use a little Plex So here. And I've just loaded up some stuff on Plex just for this. I don't want to get a copyright strike here, uh, but we'll just go ahead and click a video uh, and make it full screen right there. And bam, there we go, uh, full screen. I don't have uh, any uh, audio kicking on this because otherwise it's really, really loud uh, the way that I've got this recording. Um, but yeah, no latency, you'll see very, very quick. And then let's go back up here, close that out. Uh, and uh, let's make this big again, just double click up there. Um, and, oh. I was where I wanted to be, there we go. Okay, and then let's go and check out a YouTube video. Okay, here's one of my YouTube videos. Uh, again, just click play. Uh, we'll turn the volume up a little bit on this. Uh, turn that down, okay. And then again, you can go full screen. Now, I haven't really noticed a huge difference between uh, 1080 and 720. The display in here is one panel and it's a 1440p display. So theoretically, I think 720 is really all it's gonna be capable of showing you, 720 on each eye. Um, I run it at 1080 just because I'm used to doing that, um, but I don't think you'll see much difference between 720 and 1080. So if you are getting stuttering because maybe you have a slow connection to the outbound world, the internet out there, you go to 720, you're not gonna see a difference right there. And then uh, let's go ahead down here and pause this and I'll show you a video in VL. I'll see, so we got a video queued up here, and there is my little girl. Um, and uh, we'll go ahead and just uh, double tap that. Oh, let's go down here and click play. And uh, there we go, now full screen, boom. Um, there we go. And now, bam, a lot, a lot of like that. And again, you can, uh, you know, we wanna change the curvature of this mid play right here. Um, I've noticed that the remote video playback on this is uh, identical to what you see if you load the videos on the go. I haven't noticed any sort of lag, anything like that. And here we've got Fortnite, and I am not a big gamer, so we'll go ahead and stop our kind of demo right there. The games work, and you can just hook up regular Bluetooth, and it will pass it from your go to your computer, so you don't need to worry about Bluetooth uh, distance restrictions, you know, 30 feet at best. Um, say you've got your computer downstairs, you wanna go upstairs, pop on the go, play some video games. You only need to have the game controller connected to your Go. So that is really nice. Um, yeah, can't wait till they uh, update it and we've got all the video features on it because it's going to be the best video player uh, on the market and all the other features, just, it's sick. It's a dope, dope app. So I think that's about it. If you guys have questions, feel free to ask in the comments below. Uh, please, please give this video a thumbs up. It really does help and subscribe if you like this kind of stuff. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks.